Well, Mike, first of all, congratulations on joining the England coaching setup. Uh, do you want to just explain to us exactly what you've signed up for and, and how long for, actually? Yeah, um, I had a chat with, with Stuart last week and he, he uh, informed me he'd like me to go on the uh, South Africa tour. So working through the Barbarians game, England played Barbarians at the end of May, then going into the, the three test tour of, uh, of South Africa. Um, you'll then obviously reassess what goes on for, for, from there on. So. Uh, based on on results and, and everything that goes with it, um, you know it's a great opportuni opportunity for me to uh, to show what I'm uh, capable of doing. And did it take much persuading for you? Did he have um, to say it to you? No, not at all. To be honest, I think uh, you know what I've seen in over the Six Nations and uh, where I'd like to go as, as a coach. Um, you know, to to be asked to get a coaching role for a, for a national team is 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 the the dream job, I suppose. And um, you know, I've been given that opportunity now and. Um, you know, hopefully it'll go well. Hopefully I can work well with, with Stuart and, um, and uh, Graham um, and we can move on forward from there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. I'm very excited by it, especially with the, the group of players that they take in on board as well. There are a lot of good youngsters that uh, you know, probably haven't seen cut their teeth at international level yet um, that are well capable of doing it and are doing it on a week in, week, in, week out basis in the Premiership. So I'm hoping that these guys can can really get out there and, and express themselves on the international stage as well. And when you arrived here 20 years ago to start your, your rugby career in England, is this a position you ever thought you'd, you'd be in? No, you don't. And I'm I like, you know, I'm, I'm very much a person that lives day by day, pretty much. You know, I don't look too too far into the future. And uh, you know, opportunities arise. They they arose throughout my playing career, um, and uh, you know, they've now arisen through my through my coaching although it'd be a pretty short uh, coaching career so far so yeah it's, it's very very exciting it's it's what we're at at the moment and, and where I'm at at the moment is is in a good place and, and looking forward to the to the tour and you mentioned the the, the six nations and this group of young players that, uh, that Stuart and, and Graham have, have brought together how much of a factor was it in your decision to, to be given the opportunity to kind of get your teeth and get your arms around this this group of young players as they start their journey towards 2015 ultimately yeah I, th I think you know Andy Farrell had a massive part in that too you know Andy Graham and, uh, and Stuart all had a massive part to play and I think Stuart really based it around the culture you know defense and culture and you saw that in the in the Six Nations that uh, you know they, they defended for their lives and, and that commitment to each other was there and, and, and that's so vital at international level to be able to do that and whereas now an opportunity is maybe shift that focus a little bit more towards attack. Now we've got that, that base, still maintained it and Stuart will keep reiterating exactly what he wants. Um, but for, for my point of view, it's just coming in and tweaking a few little things in the attack side of things where we can just get the balance a little bit better as it is um, currently. And as a, a very experienced international yourself and kind of an, an educated head in coaching, what were the specifics that you saw in the way that England were attacking in the Six Nations that you'd like to address? Well, again, a lot of the, a lot of the time, you know, the England have a very good kicking game. I think Owen Farrell um, and uh, Dicko and all those guys have, have, have again put the team in the right positions all the time. Set piece, I think, is something that uh, we'd like to to really make sure we nail down. You know, getting a good platform um, and then seeing what the likes of Manitou Alangi and, and Chris Ashton and all these guys can can really do with ball in hand and and just changing the focus and the mindset a little bit where we can go right every time we turn over ball. Let's move it. Let's let's get things going again, and uh, let's have that confidence and the mindset to be able to do that. And with the South Africa tour coming up, you of course have a lot of experience playing in South Africa. You, you've toured there yourself as an England player. What what will it be like for this squad going to South Africa? It'll be brilliant. It'll be an amazing amazing experience. I'm not sure how many other guys have actually toured there before. You know, it's a rugby mad country. You know, it's win at all costs. They're very very physical. Um, and there'll be a lot of abuse flying from the fans and a lot of alcohol being drunk on a Saturday afternoon. But uh, no, it's a fantastic place to go. It's, it's, it's the, the heart of, of, of rugby is, is based on there, especially in the likes of Kimberley and Rustenburg, where we're going in the, the, the midweek games. So, um, but again, a massive experience. It's a fantastic country, um, beautiful country. And uh, you know, the people are rugby mad, so they'll learn a lot, um, but it is a massive test at the end of the day. And you went out there and toured in 2000, three years ahead of a World Cup. 
Yeah. How important was that tour in, in educating the squad that ultimately went on and, and, and won in 2003 in Australia? Well, again, I think that was one of our defining moments as a squad in 2003 that we, we believed that we could beat anybody in the world. You know, we went down and we drew the Test Series, unfortunately. We, we still reckon we should have won the first one but in Pretoria, but we, we beat them in, um, in Bloemfontein the second time. So, so um, but it, that gave us the belief to go down and beat the likes of South Africa, Australia, New Zealand in their own backyard prior to a World Cup is, is a massive mental step forward and uh, I think that was one of the, the major building blocks to, to going on and getting success. And joking aside, obviously that, that first test is something that's stuck with you, you know, those ones hurt. How much of your experience is, as a player on that tour will you be sharing with the squad? Um, again, I think from a coaching perspective I'll probably learn a hell of a lot more. You know, after that first test, because it was such a massive physical battle, the, the players pretty much didn't train until the Thursday before that second test. So I think from a coaching point of view and actually managing the players and getting the best out of the players, there's only so much you can teach players in a week. Um, he's not overdoing that, he's just making sure that these guys are fresh and mentally fresh, that uh, you know they can front up every single Saturday. And finally, you've spent eight years here at Irish as a, as a player and a coach. When you sort of walk out the gates on the last day, what are your abiding memories of this place going to be? Well, I've had some fantastic ones. You know, I you know, thank Conor O'Shea, who was, uh, I think, chief exec at the time when I, I turned up 2004 um, after winning a World Cup with England. I turned up here um, on a one-year deal, thinking I'd pretty much do my one year and move on. Um, and five years later, I was um, I was still here, yeah, still playing in a, in, a, in, a, in the final of the, in the Guinness Premiership. So, you know, getting to the semi-final of the Heineken Cup and the Guinness Premiership final, I think, were probably the highlights with London Irish. And then. The people that I've worked with and the players I've played with, um, you know, have been very, very special. The fans have been very supportive towards me. I know things haven't gone as how we planned this year, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I suppose it's a learning curve. We've all learned a hell of a lot. Um, but um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll walk away with some very, very fond memories and uh, a fantastic place. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.